Mini gutter, accelerator, engineer. What do all of these have in common? Hey Vsauce, Mootsy here. And to answer that question, we need to first look at what makes a tower an actual tower. A tower is a unit that can be placed or used to protect your base or to support your towers. A tower that deals damage is called a DPS tower, usually referred to as a big damage source. Yeah, I made that up. Or some other names related to that. These towers can include the three towers I mentioned before. The accelerator, the engineer, and the minigunner. But then we got this question. What contributes as a DPS tower? Of course, it's just a tower that deals damage, right? Well, in that case, you can technically say that the commander, electroshocker, or the medic is a DPS tower, considering they, of course, do damage after all. However, most people don't see it that way. Many people see those towers as support towers. Support towers like the DJ, commander, farm, and many more that could be listed here, but I will be excluding most of them anyways, considering that I don't really care about. The ones I will be focusing are these main three. And so, support towers, as the name suggests, is used to support your towers by giving them extra range, discounts, and many more. One prime example of a support tower used by many is the commander. The commander is a support tower that is used to increase your tower's fire rate by just being there. He gives such a weird aura that towers around it gets forced to work harder and in return deals more damage. The costs of the commander and the minigunner are nearly identical, to having its third and fourth upgrade costing basically the same. With that being said, that means that the commander is as good, if not better, than the minigunner altogether. However, there are some flaws, like how the commander cannot deal damage whatsoever. He can, but he does basically the damage of a scout. No one uses the commander for its damage. People only use this for the very good buff of the fire rate, of the commander's versatility, usability. It means that the commander is mainly used by almost everyone in the TDS community, if they of course care about winning. Well now, let's talk about the upgrade since it'll actually give you a little more detail in how good the commander actually is. When you first place the tower, you get a 10% fire rate to any towers in the commander's range. Literally any tower. The commander cannot do damage in the state whatsoever though. The first upgrade gives extra range and 5% extra fire rate to your total. The second upgrade gives a very special and unique ability named the Call of Arms. I will explain it later on. The third upgrade gives the commander more range, extra damage, although I don't think you'd want it for damage, and more fire rate. And for the last upgrade, it gives another 5% fire rate as well as even more range and even more damage to the commander. Now, as I mentioned before, the commander has a unique ability named the Call of Arms. What this basically does is that it increases your tower's fire rate by 30%, which is Quite a lot. That's basically half of what a tower is, but still. This ability also lends the commander a gun. There's no way. Meaning he can actually do damage, but it's mi minuscule. You won't even notice that he does damage. However, the Koa ability gave birth to one of the most used techniques in TDS, the Koa chain. What this basically means is that it gives your towers a permanent boost of 55% fire rate for eternity. If you just use your Koa, I'll just say that now, in the correct timing, you can easily shred through bosses wave after wave until you also shred the final boss as well. Not only that, this extra 50 55% fire rate can be used with any tower, and I mean any tower. So you can use your accelerators, turrets, and engineers, put a commander, and it's even more overpowered. Now I can see a lot about the commander, but this video is not only about him. This video is about the three main support towers that I mentioned before. So let's get to the next one. Secondly, let's talk about the DJ booth. The DJ booth is a tower that deals no damage, period. It does not deal damage, do damage, swing a sword, swing a gun, anything violent whatsoever. It just stays there playing music. Anyways, although with this con, the DJ is one of if not the most used support in all of DDS. Almost equal to the commander, I think. It gives a range buff and discounts for all towers within the DJ's range. Really helpful combined with the commander would be a really destructive duo. But first, let's talk about the upgrades of the DJ tower. When first placed, the DJ only gives a 10% range buff to its surrounding towers in the DJ's range. DJ isn't really that good in its first upgrade, so don't place it too early. The first upgrade increases its range. That's it. Not no. the buff, just the, the tower's range. The second upgrade increases its range again and also gives a 5% extra range buff to nearby towers. The third upgrade, which is what most people upgrade the DJ to in mid waves, gives the most useful buff of them all the discount buff. It gives a total of 10% discount, which is quite a lot. It can really save your farm when you only have $900 and can afford the third upgrade of the farm. The fourth upgrade increases the range buff by, I think, 20%, and of course, the DJ's range as well. And lastly, for the final upgrade, it gives the DJ even more range buff to the nearby towers, and the discount buff, obviously, which increases from 10% to 20%, a lot more better than the last one. These upgrades does not deal damage specifically, and is mainly used to support short range towers or more expensive towers like the accelerator or engineers. However, with these mishmaps and stuff like that, the DJ comes with its other cons as well. Firstly, you can only place it once. Only one DJ. Nothing more than that. That means you have to place your DJ in the utmost important parts of the map, covering many towers and farms so your buffs can actually help the most towers in need. Secondly,
Additionally, the discount buff becomes useless when everyone has max towers, meaning that technically the range buff is what makes the DJ the DJ now. But it is still very nice considering your accelerator can actually cover the entire map still. Lastly, the DJ can't do anything damage wise. All it can do is just sit there and do nothing whilst buffing your towers. So it is technically not recommended to place DJ in early waves, maybe mid waves, but you mainly want a level 3 DJ at best. This also applies to the commander by the way, he's kind of useless at his first few levels until you get Koa which is quite overpowered. And with that said, let's get to the final tower which is the farm. The farm is just like the DJ booth which cannot do damage whatsoever. It does not give any extra fire rate, range buffs, discount buffs, or any sort of buffs whatsoever. It's absolutely useless in every case in scenario that requires damage. However, did you know that towers cost money? The farm provides a set amount of money per wave. By upgrading it more and more, you of course get even more money. You can get from $50 all the way to $1,500 per wave. The farm is an investment tower where you have to give it money to get the value back or profit. However, this value or profit, I could say, only returns after each wave. Well, let's talk about the upgrades of the farm first, and then we'll talk about it more in detail later. When you first place the tower, it of course does nothing. You would have to wait for the next round to actually gain the money provided from the farm. You only get $50 from when you first place it, but it will get more pricier and provide more money for the round of waves. You mainly want to place like a level one in the f in like literally before the round started at wave one. So yeah, the first level increases the money gained from $50 to $100. Just get this upgrade if you're going to farm because it's basically another farm but $50 cheaper. The next level increases the money gained from $100 to $250. This upgrade is what I would mainly suggest most of you to get. However, it's your preference so I don't really care. The third level increases the money gained from $250 to $500. It costs $1,000 for the upgrade and it's quite expensive but it's worth it, really worth it. For the fourth level, it increases the money gained from $500 to $750. Not really worth it to be honest. Much rather upgrade level 2 farms to level 3s instead of getting level 4, considering it also costs $2,500 which is quite expensive. And finally, for the last upgrade, the max amount of money you can get from the farm is $1,500. This is quite damn good, especially for more expensive towers like the Accelerator or the Engineer. Now, after those upgrades, I think you can see why Farm is quite the tower. It does absolutely nothing for the whole wave until the very start of the next wave where it actually gives you money. This set amount of money is really worth it though as the more you progress the waves, the more you realize that you get basically a penny's worth of value to upgrade your towers without the farm. I can't use many expensive towers like the Accelerator or Golden Minigunner without the farm, so yeah. People have to use the farm even with the downside of it not bringing anything to the table except money. So I guess money does solve all your problems, huh? Okay, so this video might make you think that it's just a three guides in one, which technically it is, but I am here now just to summarize what I said in the three support tower upgrades and details. Bear in mind that these are only three support towers. There are many others that are similar to them that could be explained in detail like the Medic or the Warden, but you can watch a Cryptid or some other TDS tubers for that. All these three towers require some sort of output DPS to help sustain itself. None of them can really do anything except for the Commander, but like, his DPS is shit. And for that reason, they're called support towers. They're weird and unique in a way because in a tower defense game, they can work in so much other wacky ways. Commander is just one of many which is useless on its own but is really overpowered with towers that are actually good. And that's these towers aka the support towers which are kind of weird. But in a good way as they give your towers much more needed help and supportive buffs to lead your waves to victory. This video took a while, so likes and you hitting the subscribe button would really help the channel out, especially for my ego. I, I want that boosted up. It's free, and you can help subscribe if you want. With all that said, thank you for watching this video. I am Mootsi, and I'll be hibernating once again. Bye-bye.